Let's make history. So the 7th of July just passed. It was yesterday. Uh, and back in 1928, the year my uncle Cookie was born, was the first time that sliced bread was sold in Chillicothe, Missouri. Now that's in northern Missouri, right? And north of that is Iowa. And the inventor of the machine to slice the bread was actually from Davenport, Iowa. And so uh, he was working on it for a while and finally got it done in 1928. And Chili Cote claims to be you know, the home of sliced bread. However, there's a store in Battle Creek, Michigan, that's disputing that claim. I mean, they're saying that they were the first ones to sell sliced bread. Now they don't have the receipts to back up that claim. However, they use the same machine that uh, Otto Roweber, who's the creator of the machine, uh, that he created. So, on this day in history, July 7th, when I was growing up, my great grandfather, he ate a roll with salami and cheese every single morning. He'd been doing that since he was a child, all the way up until the day he died. He lived to 90 years old. And for us, you know, uh, we did have uh, sliced bread in my house, but you know, we couldn't even take it or leave it because we really used the long Italian rolls. Things were like two feet long, maybe even longer than that. Um, that or even better would be the pan sobao, or the, uh, the pan, also known as pan sobado. And it's like the Italian roll, except it's a wider hero type of bread, shorter and wider. And for me, it's the best choice. It's a, it's a tad bit of sweetness to it. Also, you could put like a fried egg or a cold cut right there and it'll fit perfectly. Whereas with the Italian bread, it's good and all, but the cold cuts tend to hang off the side because it's really narrow. Um, so for me, sliced bread is a little overrated, especially considering the term. Best thing since sliced bread. You know, people have went years and years without it, like I told you. And what my grandmother would do is she would have the roll there and you know, you break off a piece or you cut a piece off and just slit it down the middle, throw what you want in there. Sometimes throughout the day, if you were hungry, even use it for a snack, just break a piece off with your hand, slap some butter on there, maybe heat it up, get you a coffee and you're good to go. So for me, sliced bread wasn't that big a deal. However, it made, uh, it was heavily impactful. The, the, uh, the, the sales in bread went up, consumption in bread went up also, Accessories, bread related accessories went up like jams, spreads, things in that realm. Because the bread was more accessible, people didn't have to cut their own bread, which is what they did beforehand. So now they ate bread more because it was just an easier process. But I tell you, for me, uh, with sliced bread also comes all those preservatives that it tends to be loaded with because once you cut it, you have to go out your way and make an effort to keep it fresh longer because once you open it, it's prone to go bad. Otto mulled over this idea for mm. years and by 1916, he decided to sell his jewelry stores and make his bread slicer a reality. The mechanical bread slicer was off to a rocky start. At this point, most people would have given up. Luckily, Otto wasn't most people. By 1928, he'd created a machine that both sliced and wrapped loaves of bread. In July of that year, pre-sliced bread was sold for the first time, and the invention's popularity skyrocketed. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to Will Flores TV on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and X.